I'm Dr. Melissa Moss and I know biomedical engineering. One thing that we do in the lab to study the formation of protein aggregates from this amyloid beta protein is to use size exclusion chromatography. Size exclusion chromatography is a technique that allows us to separate molecules based upon their size. Because protein aggregates are much larger than single protein monomers, we can then separate these two entities apart using the size exclusion chromatography. Therefore, we can remove our monomers that have not been incorporated into aggregates from our protein aggregates so that we can learn more about the protein aggregates by themselves. Size exclusion chromatography works by passing a solution that contains molecules of different sizes across a column. That column contains a packed polymer. Certain molecules enter that polymer because of its pore size and other molecules will not enter that polymer because they are much larger than the pore size. As a result, the big molecules which can't enter the polymer matrix will pass directly through the column, having a very short path length from the top of the column to the bottom of the column. Smaller molecules will enter the intricate pore structure of that polymer matrix and therefore they will have a very long path length from the top of the column to the bottom of the column. In this way, size exclusion chromatography separates very large molecules, which will elute quickly, from very small molecules, which will elute very slowly. Once we isolate our aggregates from this size exclusion chromatography column, we can use a variety of techniques that will help us learn more about them. We use a fluorescent dye known as thioflavin T, which is very useful because it will bind to the protein aggregates, but it will not bind to the protein monomers. Therefore, when protein aggregates are present, we can see a fluorescent response, and in this way we can determine how many aggregates we have in a particular sample. Another technique that we use to understand more about the protein aggregates is known as dynamic light scattering. Dynamic light scattering works by looking at a protein in a solution and the way in which it scatters light. It essentially shines a laser beam into a protein sample and detects light that is scattered at a 90 degree angle. The particles as they pass through that laser beam will begin to scatter light and by looking at the rate at which that light is scattered, the instrument can essentially determine how quickly a particle is moving through the laser beam. Small particles will move very quickly, large particles will move very slowly. So by understanding how quickly the particle moves through the laser beam, the instrument can then perform a set of mathematical manipulations and subsequently determine the size of the particle based upon its rate of movement.